If the printed word is going out of fashion, what are the implications for the individual and for democracy? Joining us, Richard Hefner, Professor of Communications and Public Policy at Rutgers University. And from Atlanta, Dr. Richard Berenson, President of American University. Dr. Berenson, are we seeing the growth of two kinds of illiteracy, people who can't read and people who won't? Yes, we are indeed. Uh, about a third to a fifth of the adult population is functionally illiterate. And of the people who can read, a staggering fraction do not read. That's the illiterates. And they are perhaps almost more tragic to our society than the functional illiterates. Why more tragic? Because they have the ability to use this remarkable tool of reading, and yet for whatever reason they do not. Perhaps they're watching too much television. Whatever the case, they're getting their information in other ways. They're not holding it in their hand, reading it, synthesizing it, repeating it, going back over it, analyzing, and thinking. What does that mean for our culture? Well, since our democracy is predicated on the assumption of a well-informed electorate, it could be quite tragic for our society, particularly as the percentages of illiterates and illiterates seems to be growing, and some projections suggest that by the year 2000, it could make up a very substantial fraction of the American people. What's this mean to a democracy? It means, of course, that more and more of us are not prepared, as uh, we've just heard, and it means also that we're going to depend more and more upon your medium. We're going to depend more and more upon that red light to tutor us. And I think we have to accept that, understand that, and not simply tear our hair and say, I de me, we are going to be illiterates. There's a different kind of literacy, which I don't want to embrace, and you probably don't either, but it's there, and it's television. What, what's the nature uh, of the difference between learning from the electronic media uh, and from print? I think one teaches us, print teaches us to turn inside of ourselves. I think it's something we incorporate in ourselves and it facilitates the development of individualism. I think the other makes us simply cogs in a machine and that is what I am afraid of. Dr. Berenson, if we become cogs in a machine, does that mean as the, that the public can be manipulated more in a political way? It is possible that it could be manipulated, but bear in mind, television has some very powerful benefits as well. It brings the entire global community together instantly, as we've seen just very recently with the tragedy of, of the shuttle mission. It provides instant information as no other means. However, it also means that one or two or three people, off in New York or Los Angeles or somewhere, the TV producers synthesize and basically decide what you're going to learn. Now, in the case of a book, you go into the library and you have that vast resource before you and you decide what you're going to read and you reread it. Also, our students of today, even the adult population, is thinking, le learning, reasoning based on sound bites. Basically, it's the amount of information that can be compressed between two commercials. If you have a video generation, Dr. Berenson, coming into university, how do you teach them, especially using professors who are used to print? Yes, the professors grew up in another generation, and they're basically teaching with the same yellow uh, lecture notes that they've used for 20 years or more. American society has got to readjust. The faculty has to readjust. The school teachers way back down with the third graders has to readjust. We should not condemn television. We shouldn't scream and say, let's give up on it. We will not. It's mesmerizing. It's with us. What we need to have is better programming on our TV, and we have to keep reinforcing the idea from the, the two-year-older on that reading is imperative, that the English language is imperative to us as a society. How do you respond to that? Well, I think this notion of better programming is uh, nice, it's worthwhile. Yes, of course there should be better programming. You don't want to say that programming should be worse. But I think people like Neil Postman point out to us that, as McLuhan had in the past, that there is something about the medium itself, there is something about our perceptual apparatus that has changed thanks to the fact that we're now getting our information through this electronic means you, rather than through print. Do you see that change in your students? Sure, I see it in my students. My students are less willing to focus and concentrate. Uh, they're more willing to get their information through this electronic device. And that means people who are not, going back to your first question, as prepared for the hard, the arduous task of thinking that's basic to any democracy. All right, let's talk a little bit about democracy. What happens? Uh, in a country like ours, when it's important that the electorate is informed and the electorate gets informed in little flashes uh, off the television more than, uh, let's say, an in-depth article in a newspaper, as it, they were in the past. It means that we don't know as much about what we're doing as we did in the past. It means that we will make the wrong decisions based upon information that is not full enough. After Are we all, doing that already? Of course. When you say that's the way it is, 
when you present the news in a half hour and imply that's the way it was around the world today. You're saying to the people who are watching you, that indeed is all you really need to know. Now, I know individuals don't feel that way. Newscasters don't feel that way. But that's the dynamic of the medium. We're satisfied. We think we are there. We think we have been there. We think we've mastered the knowledge that needs to be mastered, and we haven't. D Dr. Berenson, when you think about the future, is your fear that this country will be uh, run by a reading elite or be run by uh, the video generation? Well, it's probably going to be run by the, the uh, reading elite, but the voters and the vast majority of the people will be the video people. And that's not necessarily bad, but what does trouble me is that there can be a growing gap between those who have and know and read and those who do not. Insofar as our society now has at least two cultures, the poor and uneducated, and those people who are more advantaged, I'm afraid that technology, which accelerates everything, may accelerate that gap to be even broader uh, by the year 2000. We're going to have to leave it there because we're out of time. Thanks very much for joining us, Dr. Richard Berenson, Professor Hefner. We'll be back next week looking at another social trend in a changing America. I'm Marty Goldenson. Thanks for joining us.